Do you enjoy creepy horror stories? Be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more spooky videos from Scare Street. The Unwilling Ghost by Julia Grace Tiffany looked out at the parking lot, her eyes concentrating on the road outside the fast food restaurant where she worked. She was itching to get out of her uniform and into something that didn't stink of french fries and burger grease. Christian would be there to get her soon, she was sure. She hugged herself. It was a chilly day. She wasn't sure she really wanted to go out tonight. She'd been thinking about it all day, looking up at the daunting gray rain clouds, just waiting for the downpour she expected. It still hadn't rained, and the clouds overhead were puffy, moving slowly. Tiffany didn't mind the rain if she was inside her apartment, watching through the window. But she didn't like to be caught out in it, didn't like the feel of the water touching her skin. To her, it was like sharp needles all over her head and arms. The mist when she was using an umbrella was just as bad. It was one of the very few things Tiffany was picky about. Nothing much irritated her. For the most part, she was a happy-go-lucky kind of girl, wearing little makeup, braiding her hair, and styling her clothes after some of the most fashionable hippies to ever grace the planet. Arguing was the furthest thing from her mind, even on a day with threatening clouds overhead. Christian was only a few minutes late. In the past, when he'd picked her up from work, he was always on time. Tiffany figured she could forgive him this one time. She glanced up again. If only it weren't a day like this, though. Christian's blue SUV pulled into the parking lot just when Tiffany saw the first raindrops splatter on the concrete walkway below her. She jogged to meet him and hopped in as quickly as she could, giving him a grateful smile. You're just in time. Thank you for coming to get me. Christian smiled back at her with a big, toothy grin, leaned over, and pecked her on the lips. It's good to see you, honey. I'm sorry I'm late. Traffic. Tiffany shook her head. Don't you worry about it, babe. But do you think we should still go out tonight? I mean, with this weather... Christian gave her a side glance, leaving one side of his lips up in a half grin. Don't be silly. This is the perfect weather for an adventure like that. Tiffany turned her head to look out the window, running one hand through her long blonde curls. She scanned the horizon, her hazel eyes narrow and nervous. I don't know, she breathed. What are you so worried about? Christian's question was voiced with genuine curiosity. We've been planning this for months. You didn't seem worried about it before. Tiffany looked back at him. Oh, I don't know. It's okay. Let's go anyway. I don't want to let you down or anything. He lifted his eyebrows. Tiff, if you really don't want to go, that's fine. I'm just wondering why you've suddenly changed your mind. I know you don't like the rain, but it's not like we're gonna be out in it. I guess, she shrugged, I guess it's because of the creepiness factor. Christian let out a delighted laugh. The creepiness factor? That's a good one, Tiff. I've never heard that before. We haven't done a lot of creepy stuff together, Chris. She defended herself with amusement in her voice. I mean, come on. We've been dating for like five years now, and when was the last time we ever visited a haunted house or something like that? Now we're going up to Brooks where all those kids died? It's creepy, you have to admit. Of course I admit it, he replied, 
his blue eyes on the road in front of him. That's why we're going in the first place. She was quiet for a moment. Christian glanced at her. Hey, Han, if it makes you that uncomfortable, we won't go. No, it's all right, really. I'm just nervous. You know I believe in spirits and stuff. I can't help being a little anxious. Settle yourself, Tiff. I'm not going to leave your side. I'll be there every minute. She smiled at him before turning to look out at the rain slapping against her window, making trails down to the door. She refused to think the water looked like tears. That didn't seem like a good omen to her. Her nervousness continued all the way up to their arrival at the hospital. It looked so creepy from the outside. It had once served the community of Rockbridge, Utah as an insane asylum, back in the days of early medicine and electroshock therapy. It stayed open from the late 1800s till 1973, when it had been shut down and abandoned. Tiffany had looked the hospital up after she, Christian, and a few of their friends had a discussion about ghosts and spirits. Several of her friends mocked her because she believed. She didn't care what they said, but Christian did. The conversation had sparked an idea in his mind, and he harped on her to visit Brooks for weeks until she finally agreed to go check the place out. It had been a regular spot for teenagers to explore for years, but neither had ever heard of anything really bad happening there other than people coming out with tales of feeling strange or cold, maybe a few marks and scratches on them to prove their encounters were real. Christian had his doubts, even after the hospital was investigated by a television ghost-hunting crew. The men doing the investigation had interviewed a lot of people in Rockbridge, Christian among them. He'd expressed his doubts at the time, but had to admit he'd seen some footage from the ghost hunting team that made him question his skepticism. Tiffany hadn't been interviewed for the show. If she had, she would have told them she never wanted to enter the place, and that spirits were real and very dangerous to the human psyche. She hadn't watched the episode until Christian brought it to her attention. He told her of his plan to visit the hospital when the weather warmed up. They'd been planning it since the dead of winter. Now it was spring, and the time had come. And spring had brought the rain with it. Christian thought there could be no better environment for ghost hunting. He was hoping the sound of the rain, and maybe a little thunder, would give both of them enough of a shock to be satisfied with what they found inside. He didn't think they would encounter anything worth writing to Mom about. Christian took Tiffany's hand after they got out of the SUV. He'd parked it to the side of the parking lot, so it was mostly hidden from view. The hospital wasn't locked, so it was definitely not breaking and entering, but it was trespassing, and not exactly legal to be inside. A huge metal sign had been erected up front, proudly stating, Brooks Insane Asylum, in bent iron. Even though it was old and rusty, and nearly covered in vines and foliage, the sign stood out like an ominous greeting. Christian and Tiffany walked under it, both looking up apprehensively. Tiffany squeezed Christian's hand uncontrollably until he gave a little yelp. She looked at him. He was trying to remove his hand from hers. She let go. Sorry. He just grinned at her. That was his typical response, and one of the reasons Tiffany knew she would someday marry the man. She felt his hand on her back as they walked to the double front doors. They were open, with about an inch of a gap between them. Christian reached out and touched the door. 
It slid open easily as if it had recently been used. The two looked at each other. Well, you want to go in? Christian asked, raising his eyebrows. Tiffany didn't answer. She just nodded. He gestured with his head toward the door. You go first. I'll catch up the rear. But what if I walk right into something terrible? Christian chuckled. He turned her so that she was facing him and pulled her to him. He looked directly in her eyes and pinched her chin lightly between his thumb and fingers. You're not going to, I promise. You're just not. And even if you did, I'm only about a foot behind you at most. I'll protect you. Tiffany felt a release of adrenaline that made her heart pound for a moment. She groaned and touched her chest with her fingers. You all right? She nodded, looking up at him again. I'm fine. I just... anxiety, I guess. Christian smiled. I got you, babe. Come on. This is supposed to be fun. Get your phone out. No telling how much light will be in there. It's such a gloomy day, I don't expect we'll be able to see much without them. You got it fully charged? Yeah, and I brought a portable charger in case we need it. She looked down at the big, soft purse she was carrying. It was more like a sack, which was what she preferred. I really hope we don't need it, she said, sliding her eyes back up to look at him. Nah, we probably won't be in there for more than an hour or so. If we don't see something by then, we'll just leave. We can get more entertainment from a Halloween haunted house. Tiffany nodded. Okay, that sounds good. Now take my hand and don't break my fingers, okay? Tiffany giggled. Okay. She took his hand and, lifting her phone to shine the flashlight app into the huge lobby on the other side of the doors, entered the hospital. You know... She kept her voice hushed, the feeling of heaviness in the air making her immediately tired. I have seen a whole lot of TV shows and movies where people who explore these places never come out alive. Christian nodded. And I've watched them with you, he said. But that doesn't mean it's like that here. Nothing's ever happened here other than minor scratches and hearing a lot of sounds. Even that ghost crew didn't get hurt, and they were probably trying to provoke whatever is supposedly here. Well, a lot of children died. I guess if we do see a ghost, it will probably be a child. Christian didn't know what to think of her logic, although a lot of children had died in the fire that took the pediatric wing from the hospital, many more adults had died over the years by far. He didn't respond. If she wanted to comfort herself that way, it was fine with him. The two made their way to a set of stairs leading up to the second floor that further curved around and then went up to the third. Let's explore the top floor. Christian said excitedly. That's where the almost normal people were kept. But I thought you wanted to see if spirits were real, Tiffany teased with a small smile. Christian chuckled. Of course, I'm just trying to make sure you're comfortable. Tiffany laughed out loud. <laughs> oh, Chris, you're so crazy. I guess I'm in the right place then. Again, she laughed, and he joined her. Tiffany moved her phone around so the light would show her what was around her. When they passed the front desk, a sad feeling washed over her. There were clipboards still at the desk with writing on them, an old phone with multiple lines, and even a picture, probably of an employee's child. Wallpaper was peeling all around her, reminding her of flaking skin. She shivered, but pressed on. 
It was much darker on the second floor. She insisted they go down the corridor there since it had been the medium-level psychiatric disorders that placed someone on that floor. She played the light from her phone off the walls. At the end of the hallway was a set of glass doors. Her light reflected off them brilliantly, making her quickly turn the phone away. Debris and trash littered the corridor when they stepped out from the stairwell. The door closed behind them. Christian looked back at it, while Tiffany shone her light on various items that had been left behind when the hospital was abandoned. I'll never understand why people just leave it like this. A wheelchair in the middle of the hallway? Trash everywhere? Christian shrugged. Why clean it? It was being abandoned. Why even bother expending the energy? Tiffany nodded. I guess you're right about that. Of course I am, he teased her. She chuckled and slapped him lightly on the arm. Come on, she said with a smile. Let's see what we can find. The first time Tiffany got the creeped out feeling she was expecting was when the light from outside, shining through the glass doors at the end of the hallway, began to grow weaker and weaker. That must be a way out, she said. It looks like those doors lead outside, unless there's a light on in the hospital. Christian shook his head. Those doors do go to the outside. Remember that huge wheelchair ramp? There's another one that goes to the third floor, and it's on the other side of the hospital. Tiffany nodded. She understood that concept. So, if you get freaked out, we'll just go out that way, okay? She nodded again. It had grown dark enough for everything around them to be drenched in shadows, except for the light shining from their phones. Their eyes adjusted quickly, but they could just see what was around them. I'm gonna check out the doors, Tiffany said. Make sure they aren't locked, if they are. She stopped when an almost unheard sound met their ears. They both froze in place. Did you hear that? Tiffany whispered. Of course I did, Christian replied. What do you think it was? He didn't answer right away. When she heard nothing, Tiffany swung her phone around and pointed it directly at Christian's chest. What was it? she asked. Christian shook his head. How should I know? It sounded like... like a pebble being thrown. Something small skittering across the floor. Tiffany agreed with him. Yeah, I think it came from over here... Maybe a rat, or... She shivered. She hoped it wasn't a rat, her disgust for the creatures apparent across her face. You gonna check the doors? Christian said. I'll explore this and call to you if I need you. Tiffany chuckled. I can't imagine what you would need me for, darling. His soft laughter met her ears, making her feel much safer than she should have. She crept slowly down the hallway toward the glass doors, running her phone light over the trash around her. Discarded napkins, hospital robes, even needles were scattered everywhere, pushed up against the walls as if someone had just used a large broom and swept it all up. She passed the doors to the rooms. Only a few were open. She stopped at the exit doors and pushed them open a little, her heart pounding with anticipation. If she saw a ghost or an apparition, she would probably faint. She wasn't as confident as she wanted to be. A lot of people had died at Brooks before it had been shut down. Tiffany glanced over her shoulder, noticing the bright light from Christian's phone pointing in the other direction. She turned back and reached out to grasp the handle.
Tiffany's eyes fluttered open, and she coughed as the dust on the floor invaded her nose. She lay a few feet away from the doors, her phone sitting face down beside her, the light shining from it directed up at the ceiling. Tiffany gasped and turned herself over. Her heart was beating rapidly. She thought it might erupt from her chest. She had no idea where she was. She grabbed her phone and shone the beam around her, slowly getting to her feet. Every muscle in her body ached. She shone the light down the hallway from the glass doors, her memory sweeping back into her mind. Christian? she said in a low voice. There was no one in the hallway. She was alone. Christian! Her voice shook along with the rest of her body. She said his name a little louder this time. Her foot met something long and round. It felt like a soft log of wood. She looked down, pointing the light toward it. It was an arm, a severed arm. She let out a yelp and kicked it violently away from her. It went skittering down the hall. She didn't hear it come to rest anywhere, almost as if she had kicked it into oblivion. Oh, my God, she whimpered. Christian? Christian, where are you? She lifted one hand to cover her mouth and sobbed, peering down the hallway through frightened tears. Please, please answer me. Please, she repeated, and then, faint but audible, she heard her name. Tiffany, help me. Tiffany, Tiffany. It was definitely Christian. For a moment, Tiffany's tears ceased, and then, out of joy, they began again. Christian, she called out, moving her eyes along with the light. She could see nothing. Christian, I'm over here. I can't get to you, Tiffany, he called back. I'll keep talking and you follow my voice. Do you have your phone? Yeah, the light is still working. I'm coming to you, but I don't see you. Where are you? I'm down the hallway, Tiffany, Christian called out. Keep walking away from the doors. Just walk away from the doors. She began to move forward, holding her arms out in front of her to come in contact with anything in her way before she ran into it. Follow the sound of my voice. You'll get to me. Maybe we shouldn't have come here after all, Tiff. I'm, I'm in some kind of hole. It just came out of nowhere. I didn't see it with my light, and I don't know what these things are in here with me, but it stinks like hell. He stopped. When he did, so did Tiffany, and panic rose in her throat. Christian! She shrieked. Sorry, his voice came to her. She was very close to him, but even with her light, she couldn't see him. She could only hear that his voice was much closer. I had to get off something. Really uncomfortable. Just keep going. I think you're really close. Be careful. Don't want you to fall down here, too. A thick smell of blood filled Tiffany's nose, a smell she recognized. The light on her phone suddenly went out. She cried out in dismay and looked at the screen. The battery was too low for her to use. My phone died, she called out. There's not enough charge for the light. You brought the portable charger. Use that. Tiffany remembered the charger in her bag. She slung it from her shoulder and set it down on the ground in front of her. She heard it splash into something. Confusion ran through her mind. There's something on the ground here. Apprehension and fear split through her when she realized why she smelled blood. 
Oh, my God. Christian, are you hurt? There's blood all over the floor right here. How do you know? Did you see it? No, I smell it. And I just put my bag down in some kind of liquid. I'm willing to bet that's what it is. Yeah, that or... Don't give me any more gross ideas, Christian. I'm looking for my charger. Hold on. I'm not going anywhere. Tiffany heard the sarcasm in his voice. She ran her hands through her bag repeatedly but felt no portable charger. Dismayed, she left the bag where it was. She got down on her knees and began to crawl in the direction she knew Christian to be, not caring that blood was soaking into her jeans. It was cold, and it made her shudder several times. But she wasn't going to give up without finding Christian. She had her doubts she would be able to get out anyway, with or without him. I can't find the charger, Christian, she said in a low voice. But I'm coming to find you anyway. Just be careful, Tiff. You're really close and... Her hands went over the edge of the floor. She almost lost her balance. Jesus, she whispered. I think I found the hole. She put one hand down, feeling the side of the wall. It was smooth and slick, probably with more blood. Thank God, Christian's voice sounded relieved and happy. He reached up to her. Only the tips of their fingers touched. I've been waiting for you, Tiffany. I knew you'd come looking for me after you woke up. Tiffany felt confusion slide through her. Christian, how do we get out of here? What if all the other doors are like the ones at the end of this hallway? They must be locked, or I'd have been able to push them open. Christian's voice came up to her, his happiness gone. You don't know what happened, do you? Tiffany shook her head. No, I wouldn't have asked you if I did. I don't want to be here anymore, Chris. The floors are covered in blood. I'm covered in it now. This is so disgusting and scary. I'm officially creeped out and we need to get the hell out of here. Christian sighed. My phone died a little bit ago. Maybe five minutes. I've been standing down here for a lot longer than that. You must have been out for an hour or more. It would have to be longer than that or my phone would still be charged. Should I go check the doors again? Maybe the one at the stairwell? You can't go through the door, Tiffany, Christian warned her. Just let me remind you what happened first and then we'll go from there. Tiffany raised her eyebrows. Tell me then, what happened? You were knocked out. That's probably why you don't remember. It was the electricity. The door zapped you when you touched it. Where were you? I was exploring back this way. I think whatever is in this place knew we were separated, and that's why it suddenly attacked. I have never heard of a ghost that used electricity to bind their victim. I'm sure there are plenty of things about ghosts we don't know, Tiff. I'd like to get out of here, though. You fell down there when I got zapped? Yeah, but I knew you would come for me when you woke up. It's been a while, I gotta say. Especially when I seem to be down here with a bunch of severed body parts. But why are we here? What's with all this blood? It's... it's a haunted hospital, Christian replied simply. I suppose anything can happen. Christian, I'm going to jump down. No, Tiffany, Christian sighed, frustrated. Don't be ridiculous. I'll never get out if you do. I'm not strong enough to get you out, and I'm not leaving you again. I'm not asking you to. If you came down here, the only thing I could do is lift you back up. That's just ridiculous. 
Then what do we do? Christian was quiet. We need help. We need a strong hand. I can't let you die with me. You don't have a choice, Tiffany replied quietly. I love you. I can't go on without you. Her words were deliberately slow and spaced. Won't have to. In the darkness, Tiffany could barely make out the outline of someone behind her. I believe I'm the strong hand you're looking for. I'll help you get him out. Who are you? asked Tiffany, puzzled and frightened. She couldn't make him out more than a large shape in the darkness. It was more that she sensed his presence than actually saw him. Doesn't matter who I am. You two, brother and sister, or what? Or what? Christian replied from below. Tiffany smiled, relief flooding through her. Someone else was there. Someone had come to help. She moved to the side to let the man approach the hole. When he brushed past her, she felt an intense chill and fought the strong urge to run away as quickly as possible. Lift up your hand, young man. Take mine. Tiffany could see the dark shape bend at the waist. The man reached down and waved his hand until it knocked into Christian's. He pulled him up as though he were as light as a feather, setting his feet on the ground so he was standing next to Tiffany. Tiffany stepped cautiously over to Christian and wrapped her arms around him. Light was spraying in from somewhere very, very dimly. What was that hole? Christian asked. Are you sure you want to know? The man asked. His voice was deep and rumbling. Tiffany would have given anything for a light at that moment. I don't want to know, she said. Let's just say, the man replied in a light voice, that's where they discard unwanted materials. Tiffany wrinkled her nose. That's disgusting. She sensed the man agreeing with her, nodding his head. Yes, it's not a pleasant place to be. You two should leave now. But we can't go through that door, Christian said, lifting his arm up to point, though it was almost useless because he could barely be seen. I will make sure you are safe. Tiffany could hear the doubt in her boyfriend's voice when he replied, How are you going to do that? The man hesitated at first. He didn't respond. After just a second or two of silence, he replied in a voice so deep, both Christian and Tiffany were covered in chills. Tiffany took a step back, fighting the urge to run as far away as she could. I've been here for a long, long time. I will never leave, but I can make sure you do. No one else should be hurt in this place. Are, are you a ghost? Tiffany asked, feeling like an idiot for asking. The dark shape chuckled. You might say that. An unwilling ghost, you might say. I have no choice but to wander these halls and help fools like you and your boyfriend here who think it might be funny to disturb some spirits that are already restless enough. I'm so... Tiffany stopped. We're so sorry. Can you please just help us out? I promise we'll never come back and we'll tell everyone we know they shouldn't either. 
I could let you go, but how do I know you're telling the truth? What have you come back with another television show? Tiffany's breath shook. She was close to fainting. All she wanted at that moment was a warm bed and hot chocolate. She grabbed onto Christian's arm, wanting to tell him they needed to leave right at that very moment. The black shape reached out and took her arm. She shrieked, but the touch was just a little colder than usual, and all he did was turn her to face the front doors. He leaned over and whispered a few words in her ear. She turned to look at him over her shoulder. That's it? That's all I have to say? The dark shape squeezed her arm and let it go. That's it. Christian was listening curiously, happy the light was coming stronger through the window, the darkness slowly dispersing. It was strange at the same time. He had it pegged to be at least midnight by that point. But he didn't care how the light managed to get there. He was just glad he could see Tiffany's face again, even if just barely. Tiffany turned away from the black shape. As he did the same, Christian caught a glimpse of the stranger's face, black smoke swirling around it. It was the most horrifying thing he'd ever seen. The man had holes in his face, one eye was missing, and his clothes were ripped and torn. His lips had been pulled back, revealing straight teeth. Christian turned away quickly, moving with Tiffany to the end of the hall where the doors were. Thanks, Tiffany called over her shoulder. This time, when she grabbed Christian's hand, she pulled him along and did not look back. Let's get out of here, Chris, she said in an urgent voice. At the double doors, she stopped. She stared at them for just a second before leaning forward and whispering, Set me free. She pulled in a deep breath and placed her hand on the handle again. It turned for her and the door popped open. Both of them spilled out onto the wheelchair ramp, gasping with relief. Tiffany placed one hand over her heart. It was jumping in her chest. She looked up at the stars in the night sky and then over to Christian. How was there light coming in through the door if it's nighttime? Christian just looked back, shaking his head. Oh no, I left my bag in there. It was the kind of thing most people would say with some trepidation, but Tiffany wasn't worried about it. Christian put a voice to her words. Don't ever worry about it, Tiff. There's nothing in there for you to be worried about. Everything is fine now, now that we're out of that creepy place. Tiffany nodded. Yeah, it's just a bag. Not worth risking my life over. Christian nodded. I think we're done with haunted houses for a while, he said, a small smile playing on his lips. What do you think? Tiffany took his hand. The rain didn't seem to bother her anymore, and she let him lead her back to the SUV. That's the best idea you've ever had, she said. We hope you enjoyed this story. Are you looking for more creepy horror stories? Click the link in the description or search Scare Street on Audible for a list of all our bone-chilling titles. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more spooky videos from Scare Street. See you in the shadows.